6.30, on January 12, 2023, and I'm calling to order this meeting of the Transportation and Transit Commission. My name is Bill Horns, and I see, uh, well, I'll just take the roll. Uh, Micah LaDuce yep. is here. Uh, Rich Tate. Here. Uh, uh, Mike Gronitsky is not, I don't see, nor Jason Strauss, Gabriella Gerhardt. Here. And Elizabeth Ward. Here. All right, we have a quorum. Uh, I don't see any public appearances. Anybody here for public appearances on non-agenda items? Um, we have uh, an agenda before us. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Is there a discussion? Rich, I know you have a I suggestion. comment on the, the next uh, approval of the February 9th meeting minutes should be the December 8th meeting minutes, okay. the approval of minutes. Okay, December 8th. And also the uh, next TTC meeting, uh, February 9th, should be at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. So we have those two minor changes to the agenda. Um, uh, minutes, you have before you the minutes from the December 8th meeting. Uh, is, can, I have a, oh, uh, can I have a motion to approve those minutes? I move approval. Second. I'll second. Uh, and any discussion on those minutes? Uh, again, that the next TTC meeting was scheduled for Dave was at 6.30 p.m. All right. Um, well, I'll take that as a, an amendment. All in favor of approving those minutes with that amendment? Aye. Aye. I'm going to abstain. I was in here. Pardon me? I'm going to abstain because I was gone. Okay. Um, all opposed? I think we have the minutes approved. Um, then we have a set of review items, the first of which is Madison Metro Draft Fitchburg Route bus stop locations. And Bill, I think we'll ask you to walk us through those. Yeah, just shortly before we published the packet, uh, I received an email from Tim Sabota at Madison Metro. He uh, had asked us to take a look at the proposed uh, bus stops for the, the installation of the new ones, uh, mm -hmm. for the new routes, yeah. and uh, make comment on those if we would like to make some changes to those. So um, I do foresee us you know, going forward and getting some more public opinion on these. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's some routes yeah. that have some changes that are sto uh, the stops are being removed or relocated that uh, the public should weigh in on and, and see if we need to switch those back okay. to, uh, to add stops or to, okay. to relocate them. Um, did anybody else have a comment on this? Right. Question. These are all new. Is that correct? That's They're correct. not being relocated from some other place. Okay. That's correct. The only one I had any confusion to was the one that wasn't a photo, the uh, uh, MM, and uh, I think it was. Uh, yeah. And I, I can share my yeah, screen, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Is that good to do? Uh, all right. I'll do that. And, and I, I, I think, I, well, I don't know if there's, I just didn't. I, I guess I really doesn't don't need to. We don't need to discuss that. Everything's I guess clear enough. Okay. Um, so there's a process underway to get some public comment. Correct. And at some point, if there are concerns raised, we can talk about those at a later meeting. Correct. Right. Um, uh, because yeah, for me, I just looking at those stops. I, you know, it's. They look fine, but I don't know. I don't have that much context about any of them. Right. Before now, in June, when the, the, the final uh, plan approval is, is completed, there will be a public hearing uh, by Metro, and we'll have a concurrent meeting for, for Fitchburg to, to meet on that. But uh, the more input we can get to them, the sooner, uh, yeah. the, the better that we'll be off in that, at that time frame. Um, and I also note that there is a page, some, a page here of, of, uh, of stops to be removed. Mm -hmm. So I assume that that's also be, be a subject of the public okay. hearing, and we can get back to that as appropriate. Were there any other comments on these bus stop locations? Or I had a couple of things. Um, it, can I share my screen? Yep. All right, we'll stop. So 
So the first thing, I know, and I, it's, this is wild. I feel, I feel like I looked at these. So this is the Fitchburg access boundaries um, on the Madison Metro website, the different changes. I, for some reason, I thought the Z went down Lacey Road. And I guess I didn't realize that it went all the way down Cheryl. Um, it just was interesting to me because this, this whole stretch of Cheryl here is mostly businesses. So there's a lot of benefit to having a bus route go through the businesses, but it's just, it's interesting to me. Um, anyway, I was just surprised. Uh, I hope everyone <coughs> that, that goes on that bus route has noted that. Um, but the main thing that I wanted to talk about was the, the 75. Because um, I was looking through, so this was the map that we adopted in Fitchburg, and my understanding from early on in the conversation is that the 75 was not going to be touched. Now, weirdly, the 75 is a route that goes from Epic to downtown Madison. Okay. It passes through Fitchburg, but it's not actually, we don't actually pay for it, but there's stops through Fitchburg. It's paid for, I believe, in like some oh. sort of collaboration with so Epic. So there are existing stops. There are, yes. And I actually know that quite well because I used to take the 75 every day for mm -hmm. the first few years I lived in Fitchburg. <laughs> and I know a lot of people, especially on, you know, there's some senior living housing on, on Cadiz, I'm sorry, on Cahill, Maine, that, that a lot of seniors use this. Anyway, that is the system that we have uh, approved. But when I look at the closed bus stops list, and I hope I'm just misreading this, but it has uh, all these McKee Road bus stops closing. Mm -hmm. And the only McKee Road bus stops, to my knowledge, are are the Fitchrona, or the sorry, the 75 route. Mm -hmm. So I did go and look at the the proposed Route 75 on the website just like to confirm, and it says that through McKee Road. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, it says on the map that that McKee Road is peak only service. Um, there is a section of no stop zone, so it doesn't say that it's a no stop zone. So anyway, I'm very confused mm -hmm. and somewhat alarmed because I know a lot of people use it and they were not a part of the discussions of changing the bus routes because my understanding from the outset, and I believe Andrew McFadden at the time, was that the 75 wasn't going to change. So anyway, that's a concern of mine. And, I, I, uh, and if it is changing, that's something that people need to know immediately and something I'd like to consider. But at this point, the budget's long, long over done deal. So I don't know what our recourse would be, but. But the budget pertaining to, what's in the budget that is the removal of? So the budget. What's in the budget or what, well, how's the budget in the, What it's interesting about is that we don't actually pay for the 75 at all because it's, it's, it's a route intentionally to go from downtown Madison to Epic. Okay. But it does pass through Fitchburg. Right. And is frequently used by Fitchburg residents. So if, if their intention had been to remove the stops in Fitchburg, I would have hoped that we would have a conversation about how we could contribute money so that we could keep those stops, because I do believe a lot of people use them. But I, I'm hoping that I just have a misunderstanding, because my impression is that these bus stops are the ones on the key road that use, are used by the 75. Yes. And so there's clearly something amiss. And I hope I'm wrong, but if I'm not wrong, I'm very alarmed. That but <laughs> but if, it's what, here is where I'm a little confused. There are bus stops physically. Yes. Places. Um, and you're, you found a list of sites where the bus just won't stop there anymore? No, this is the closed, they're closing the bus stops. I mean, so moving the shelter or whatever? Or yeah, because I mean, and that maybe I'm, is that what I'm understanding right. correctly? The, the list that you're showing here shows the ones that are being removed. Uh, but in some cases, they are creating new stops in um. different locations, like the intersection of Hard Rock and Limestone. They are relocating a stop over okay. onto uh, Fitcherona Road. So, okay. Um, we kind of have to compare the two. Yeah. Okay. So maybe uh, how do we help resolve this? And I, it, but just to get back to the budget thing, were you suggesting that because the, is this a budget document? This list of stops. This is a Madison Metro. Because ultimately the redesign, we, we voted on a budget right. that matched the route um, hours through the city boundaries right. of Fitchburg. Right. And so when we moved, we amended the route to add length in Fitchburg. We had to yeah. amend our budget to accommodate those additional yeah. hours. We had to amend what budget? Uh, our 2023 budget. Because we, we are contributing more to Madison okay. Metro than previously because of the increased hours okay. um, through the city. So you're concerned that maybe if, the, if these stops are retained, that then our budget would have to be amended. So I don't think so. I, I guess that we've never contributed to the 75, so but we've be benefited fair. from the 75. 
And so, and that's, I mean, if, if the situation has changed, I, that we should discuss it. But um, my understanding with it was that nothing was changing. We were still getting this very, yeah. very nice benefit of having the 75 go through And Pittsburgh. you assumed there would be stops where they always have been. Yeah. And, and if, it's, if it's changing, then the, the residents need to know that and we need to have that discussion because that was not on the okay. radar. I, I, I think I've been following this quite closely, <laughs> and so I, when I realized this, I was, I was somewhat alarmed that it, okay. I had, yeah. So anyway, I hope I'm just very wrong. Yeah. I, I hope it's some sort of mistake or I'm misunderstanding the yeah. stops. Um, well, and there are no stops in here on McKee that I can see just looking through, like on our, what we just got, reviewing for new stops. So no. not necessarily relocate, or at least we don't know where they would be because they're not in this list. But, and also in the list that we have, it's a different list from this that shows some stops to be removed. Yeah, those are the, all the, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the Most of those are Deer Valley, Innovation. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's so K those aren't Sorry. the those aren't the ones of concern to you right now. No, because um, those those bus stops match the amendments and the route that we discussed at council. Okay. So, uh, so I and I know it is of concern to a lot of residents, but so these it are is the, the boundaries. Are, the, the street isn't even going to have service anymore. Your, the, your concern is that there'll still be bus going up and down McKee. But there won't be bus stops. It won't stop yes. at any place. So, so if, I'm not familiar with this, but let's just say somebody at uh, uh, McKee and, and Osmondson wants to go to uh, the square, and they eliminate the stop. How would they take M Madison Metro to get to the square? I mean, they'd have to walk. They to wouldn't. The, <laughs> I mean, they have to walk <laughs> to the red line. Yeah. Because this does serve. I mean, I, I don't. I don't. I can't say exactly how many people we'd have to uh, look at the bus stops. But I know people use it because I used to use it every morning, and it was always full. Um, it was always always quite a lot of people coming in. To and we, and there was, we didn't have any reason in the course of all this redesign of the of the system. We didn't have any reason to think this would happen. No. And when you look at the map too, there's this area that's kind of highlighted. Well, you can't really see it; it's faded out. But in blue, that's the service area on either side of that. Mm -hmm. And so they're indicating oh. that they're trying to draw uh, ridership oh. from that area, you know, a quarter mile on either side of that. Yeah. And if there's no stops, <laughs> it, it doesn't really service yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They should, should really show a quarter mile from the nearest bus stop. They should show a bunch of circle. You know what I mean? The, it, but. Um, I think there's also something to be about, um, it might have something to do with uh, paratransit too. Yeah. I could be mistaken though. Okay. I'll clarify. I, I'd right be now. curious as to the ridership numbers for what's there now that's being eliminated. It, it would be one thing if it's had two riders in the last year versus 200, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and is that something that's available to you? It's mm -hmm. going to be difficult to pull the information out of that with regard to specific stops. Like, for instance, they'll pick up at Pick and Save. Everybody gets on at Pick and Save. Mm -hmm. It's like a park and ride. And then they'll all go to, to Verona. So we don't know how many people are getting on, you know, in between oh, on the key. Yeah. But uh, it, 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 that's not the kind of information that we can pull out from what we get. Really? I thought one of the like interactive maps we had when we were first discussing this had this like stops on it and they had numbers for ridership at the stop or something like that. There was something, the interactive map, the last time I tried to look at an old link I had, the ArcGIS, it, oh, it yeah. did not exist anymore. So I don't know okay. if it's just because they're refining it so they took it off the website. And maybe um, they just, that was when we were talking about the Allied Drive like reroute and so maybe they just pulled those numbers for that specific one because that's what we had been talking about but i know they you could click on the stop and see how many riders I seem to remember something like that yeah it be a ball or a balloon or yeah this is actually an old one because now the route comes down here a little bit but yeah. Okay. So I wanted yep. to bring that up. Yep. And I and I know you're about to, yeah. you're about to be yeah. done. So okay, no. I'm happy to I, like let me know what you need to. We can sure. follow up and let me know what you need to do. I'm happy to push it or whatever. I, I copied chat on that yep. on that email. So okay. so I'll, I'll reach out to them tomorrow and or maybe tonight just to to get the information out there right. to confirm Thanks. and uh, we'll see what information we get back. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, Bill, for doing that. Um, so we'll, we'll come back to it on our next meeting, I assume. Right. Uh, um, uh, all right. Any other comments or discussion about uh, item A, reviewing the bus stop locations? Um, item uh, 7B, staff project updates. Uh, first one is intracity transit feasibility study. Uh, 
Can you give us an update on that? Uh, it's uh, in, in the box for the new director to take a look okay. at. <laughs> but, it, but that went to council? Council? Uh, they, they did approve the additional funding for did. the budget, so we had $25,000 to spend for 25. 25 oh. in total. And uh, we're, we're putting together, we will put together this RFP to put out okay. uh, this quarter and have information back for budget. That's our goal. Okay. To uh, you know, incorporate something for our 2024 operating for the next. Budget. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, any other comments or thoughts on that? Yeah, I did want to bring something up. I, I emailed. Um, I can't remember if I looked you in on this, Brad, uh, Bill, but um, Andrew McFadden reached out, and he said that there's a WISDOT, there's a specific WISDOT grant for uh, for planning. And he had watched our recent meeting, our last meeting, and he said that he thought that this project could qualify for that WISDOT. It's a, it's a rolling cycle, awarded twice annually. Mm -hmm. And he said it's an 80-20 match. Um, cities 20%. So if we could, mm -hmm. if we if we want to, we might be able to leverage that 25,000 to do a much bigger study. Okay. Uh, he seemed to think, based on what he knew, that it was a possible that we could get that grant. So mm -hmm. I flagged it for, for Chad so he can bring it up with the next director when they start. Mm -hmm. I believe our new director starting at the end of the month. Uh, 23rd. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but anyway, I wanted to flag that for everybody. Okay. Good. I mean, that's that would be a, a huge boost. Yes. I mean, that's, you're talking about $100,000. Yeah, hundred. Yeah, yes. It would be incredible. So. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, any, uh, with seeing no other comments on transit study, Cyan Road construction, um, and Bill, if you. One thing I wanted to mention, just in passing, you know, we had the tragic uh, death of a, a woman on hit by a car on Syene. And I, I, can you just give us a little snapshot of how the current changes that are going, taking place on Syene would mitigate that risk, or have anything to do with that, or is that relevant to any any of the changes that we're seeing? Uh, the the future changes to the construction is that what you're referring? Yeah. To? That uh, yeah, um, I mentioned you know several times that our goal throughout this project uh, from uh, is to increase safety, decrease speeds, uh, increase access uh, and safety to pedestrians and bicycles. All right. So there's there's a number of things that we're employing for within design of engineering that we're going to be implementing out there such as uh, uh, refuge islands and crosswalks. We're mm -hmm. gonna have specific uh, crosswalks, three crosswalks just for pedestrians mid-block, not at intersections, mm -hmm. uh, that would allow better access from the east side to the west side to the path and to the parks. So we've got that at those crossings, they're gonna have refuge islands in there. They're gonna have enhanced markings uh, for, for pavement markings. They're also going to have the rapid flash beacons, so you push the button, it'll yeah. flash. Yeah. Um, and then also, uh, we are going to be employing uh, the radar feedback signs, so you'll see, you know, the speed limit is 35 or 30, what's, what's posted out there, and you can monitor your speed as you come through those areas. Uh, that's one of the changes that we're making. Uh, we have uh, narrowed the, the driving lanes down, uh, kind of compressed them down a little bit so that it doesn't feel as comfortable to drive through there. You know, yeah. your your yeah. your mirrors are going to be a little bit closer. Yeah. You want to slow down, yeah. so we're going to have have that available. Okay. Uh, we've in, in, installed uh, bike buffers and bike lanes along the along there. Uh, made connections with sidewalks uh, so that you can have connectivity through there, and then um, we're also installing a roundabout at the intersection of Nine Bark, which will break up that long run of of traffic between McCoy and and East Cheryl. So we'll have a, a roundabout at that intersection mm -hmm. there. Um, uh, the tra traffic signal at uh, McCoy Road, it will, it's more of a T intersection, so you won't have that free flowing, you know, 40 mile an hour coming into the neighborhood. So you'll, you'll set it up for that. Uh, we've also in, increased the lighting at crosswalks and at intersections, so we'll have increased lighting throughout there. And uh, unfortunately, it's it's two years down the road yeah. uh, before we can get constructing on it. Yeah. But we are working on that. As okay. far as temporary measures go, um, we are looking into installing some of the, the driver feedback signs, the radar signs in that area, just because we're going to need them anyway yeah. um, for the project. 
We're going to try to get them ordered now. They're usually about six months out, okay. but uh, we can have those installed this year sometime. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate uh, the better now the thought that went into that whole project, <laughs> listening mm -hmm. to you describe all those things and, and yeah. thinking about this tragedy. But uh, it makes sense too yeah. when you think when you hear it. But you, not, you know, like the narrowing down. Yeah. Person yeah. to do it, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to say too. My understanding too. I mean, we had some residents come to the council meeting on Tuesday that live in that area that obviously are devastated, as yeah. we all are, yeah. about what happened. So they came to ask for what safety improvements can happen. Mm -hmm. I know that City Administrator Chad Brecklin is going to be working on maybe doing some outreach to the community and having okay. a listening session, finding out mm -hmm. what listening to them. But I will say that the police investigation of what's happened is still ongoing. We don't actually know what the cause of the accident right. was. And that will, I believe that will be released at some point once the investigation is, is farther okay. along. So it is unclear like what, what mm. deficit of safety caused the accident. Um, and you know, so I just wanted to note that too. Um, okay. So, and that will be an important in terms of making changes. Okay. You know, we wanna make sure we're fixing the problem that happened. Although obviously the long-term solution is to make the road safer, so. Okay. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we do take a comprehensive look at the whole corridor, you know, as far as what development is occurring, what will occur, um, what, uh, what are the, the needs for the corridor, you know, as far as pedestrian access, parking, speeds, and everything. So that's something that we consider in, in those measures we were planning on doing all along. So um, it's, it's unfortunate yeah. that it, it didn't take place sooner, but it, yeah. we, we are looking at it. Um, so um, I, I don't hear or from what you're saying, though, that there's any need of a f further discussion by this group right now, or in any, there's no decision that might be pending for this transportation commission stemming from this. No, we won't be having a public meeting uh, as part of the McCoy and Syene Road intersection. Uh, it's required for the grant that we received for okay. that intersection. So we'll be combining that yeah. along with the uh, the rollout of the plans for this okay. uh, for the section between uh, Annieberry Park and uh, East Clayton. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, so anyway, I, I, I jumped in before you said anything about Cyan Road construction. Was there any? Did you finish what you had in mind saying there about that? Yeah, our, our construction is pretty much wrapped up for the year. Uh, they won't be working out there probably until April. So. Um, They'll be finishing up some pond work and then starting the road construction through the summer, uh, finishing up south of Nannyberry Park. Uh, and then we'll be bidding the, the plans for the section north of that up to through McCoy Road uh, in early 2024. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Lacey, oh, sorry. sorry. I have one more question. Uh, in terms of that McCoy Road, that intersection that we looked at with the KL engineering mm -hmm. staff, do, did we make a decision on that or where does that stand in terms of making the decision about the bike path intersection with the rebuilt? Uh, we are going forward with alternative two. Okay. Um, it's not the super expensive one and it wasn't the... It's a happy medium. The happy, it's, <laughs> it's, it is a happy medium, but it does balance out the needs of both groups. Of, um, it, it, and. Uh, that, that was our recommendation going forward with that. Okay, I can't remember, was that different from what, we, we, we discussed that and right. made some recommendation, I can't remember the numbers. Was that the one that we recommended or was that, did you go a different way in the end? We, th this group recommended the uh, alternative one, which okay. was the least impact, I guess, least cost, but no. uh, we're, I think that op option two is. Okay is worth the cost that we would be recommending. Okay, and is that? That, a, that was the one that, done, that did not like route, reroute. Correct. Right, mm -hmm. like, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. Uh, item B, 7B3, Lacey Road Construction. Lacey Road Construction, we're wrapping up the, uh, the right-of-way acquisition through that. Uh, we're accept expecting the final design plans tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then we will be bidding that out and opening bids on February 21st and taking it through council approval on uh, March 13th, 14th, that first okay. meeting in March. Okay. And just kind of an aside, I remember during that discussion about Lacey Road and how big the bike path should be, or the questions about the bike path, 
Okay, then it, it, it occurred to me that there's more and more people on, on e-bikes who will be in those those mm -hmm. paths that go along the side of, of many roads. I was just curious, is just in general, is is there much discussion among planners or engineers or whoever about accommodating e-bikes better because you know it's gotten to a place where I think they can be a little dangerous on on bike actual bike paths. I mean, the, so I just wonder what what what's in the air about that issue of accommodating e-bikes. Good question, and uh, I'll bring it up to the new director. <laughs> Um, it, 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 I haven't had a chance to discuss anything with that, but yeah. I have contacts, you know, in the city of Madison that yeah. I could reach out to and see. Okay. They've kind of been, you know, we follow their lead a lot. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. How, how fast do the bikes run? Oh, they'll go in the 30s, I know. Probably faster, I don't know about what the fastest one goes, but uh, I got one. I'm sure it'll go in the 30s, 35 miles an hour or something. I would do that fast going downhill only. <laughs> it's interesting that you bring that up, though, because I know there was a lot of discussion with that Lacey Road about a lot of people were advocating not including the on-street yes. bike lanes yeah. because we had the bike path. Yeah. But now that you say that, I'd, we hadn't talked about e-bikes, yeah. but that's a really, yeah. those are much more appropriate in a on-street bike lane right. versus yeah. on a bike path that's right. being used by lots of different pedestrians. Right. I think so. Yeah. So anyway, that, I, that's something that hadn't come up, but it's going to be important for future conversations yeah. like that. So. All right. Uh, item 7B4, Fitchburg Road Design. Uh, Fitchrona? Fitch oh, Fitchrona Road. Yeah. Uh, we are uh, negotiating a contract for the redesign of that roadway between, it would be Tonto and Nesbitt on Fitchrona, so through the intersection of Lacey Road there. Um, and uh, we're planning on having that out for bid in early 24 for construction. Mm -hmm. So we'll be working through the design process this year and uh, the consultant view. Having all the public meetings, there's a couple public meetings uh, scheduled for the public to comment, and we'll be sure to bring those efforts through the committee to take a look at. And just curious, is one of the um, issues to be addressed there the fact that it floods, that you get a, a big pool of water halfway between uh, Lacey and Nesbitt? Mm -hmm. It, yep, uh, we'll be uh, installing some culverts under the road to get yeah. the, the water through the area a little quicker, but that's part of a bigger project for Goose Lake yeah. uh, where we're going to have to redo the outlet of that area yeah. so that the water won't stay in the in the lake as, as long. Okay. So okay. It's a, a double okay. fix that we have to yeah. do on that one. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you. Um, unless there's other comments on those review items, report from department. Uh, staff update, uh, we've got uh, the public works director, Tim Volker, he's from Florida, uh, engineer for 18 plus years down there, um, graduated from UW-Madison, uh, okay. coming back, mm. brave soul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Volker, V-O-E-L-K-E-R. And uh, I've spoken to him a few times and so is our administrator and um, it's a good fit for the city. Uh, okay. Got a lot of energy and, and, okay. and willing to Good. take the reins and, and go with it so Good. real excited to have him coming up here um, we also have uh, Ross Kaler uh, he's uh, he's going to be one of our staff engineers transportation a uh, little bit of transportation engineering uh, but mainly a project engineer to uh, assist with our projects uh, he starts on on Tuesday Okay. 17th. And he'll be the contact with, with us? We haven't uh, made that determination oh, okay. yet. Um, okay. We still have, you know, Andrew's position that's open. Uh, transportation engineering is, in general, very hard to fill. Uh, it's a specialized role. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, I took it because I had the experience, but okay. um, it, it is difficult to fill those roles, so um, mm -hmm. we're not sure we're going to get that. Okay. But okay. That, uh, that position is open. We also have a engineering technician position that's open and uh, okay. the assistant director of public okay. works. I assume it's as hard for you or for the city of Fitchburg as every place else to, to find good people. It seems like this is a chronic problem around the country to is filling positions. It is. Uh, so we have to get creative on what we do for outreach mm -hmm. and uh, bringing staff in or, you know, candidates in for, for interviews yeah. and try to accommodate what uh, what the interests are, but we also have our needs that we need to get completed this one. Yeah. Yeah. 
We just had a, a just for uh, additional context, we had a personnel committee meeting last night, mm -hmm. and we've been having those conversations about the difficulty of hiring, especially that transportation engineer position has just been really tough. So yeah. my understanding was that we talked about maybe hiring another staff engineer that would have more more of a mix of opportunities rather than an exclusive focus sure. on transportation. Okay. Um, so the work would get done, but it would be more it would be less one person to try to attract an engineer. The other thing that we talked about last night that we approved uh, in the employee handbook was a trainee designation for hiring. So we could hire somebody that's maybe fresh out of college, mm. uh, hire them as a trainee and give them a year to train, and then we bring them up to the, the, the pay grade okay. after a year, after a year of training. Um, I don't know if that would be considered for public works, but that's, that's mm. a new model that we might try this year. Um, and it's all dependent on the HR working with the, the hiring manager. If that, they want to approach that because that's obviously a lot of additional okay. work. But trying to find some creative solutions. The other thing that happened this year, that not, one of the big things in the 2020 budget was there was an across-the-board pay raise for all staff, um, mm -hmm. at least 3%, but everyone was being brought up to market rate. Okay. Actually, it's slightly above market rate for a city of our size oh. because we, we live in a city that's right next to Madison and Dane County and the yeah. city, well, yeah, city of Wisconsin. So we have a challenging market. So um, okay. there was that across the board uh, pay raise. So hopefully that, that does something to help um, going okay. forward in the future. Okay. Um, okay, any other questions or comments to, for Bill about the department developments? And what, and, um, I guess they didn't even expect to see you here today. I, what, what's your, what, when are you finished here? About 25 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Counting down. He's going to cut off my access about 6 p.m. Good, so. good. <laughs> well, good for you. We'll miss you. Yeah, you've been around a long time. Yeah, five yeah. years or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, we're up to item nine, announcements, which one announcement is our next meeting is at 6.30 on February 9th. Thank you, Rich. Um, any other announcements? Or? Yeah, I, I did just want to, if I can say something. I just wanted to acknowledge, Bill, uh, you, you've had an incredibly hard job. <laughs> I mean, every city's <laughs> job is hard, but your job for the last, and I've only you know, worked with you for three years, but the last three years have been unbelievable. You have done so much work. You've dealt with really unbelievably trying circumstances in terms of staffing and, and also just the amount of things that you've accomplished, the amount of projects that we've done even in the last three years, not, not even counting the things you've done previous to that. Um, all that is to say is that you've done an amazing job. You've worked so hard. You know, we're so grateful for all you've given to the city. Um, and thank you so much for your service. Right. And I really hope you enjoy your retirement and, <laughs> and get some sleep and, and you know, enjoy your hobbies because uh, right. I know it's been, you've been working a lot the last, yeah. the last few years. So thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Are you going to be staying in Wisconsin? Yeah, I will be in Fitchburg for a while and then we're going to be looking to move up north. So. Up north? Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's where our family is. So yeah. we just want, need to be closer to them. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, well, congratulations. I'll yeah. say that on your retirement. Thank you. Uh, well, that. Uh, I just this is not an announcement, but I did find that map, and I just emailed it to everybody, where oh. you can click on it and see the ridership numbers oh, for stops. Oh, yeah, know. from it, it was linked in one of our meeting minutes. So good work. Awesome. Uh, so we can look at the stops on the key and answer your question. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> curious too. Yeah, I, I, I still I'm, I'm amazed because. When I first came to Madison, I took a bus everywhere. That and a bike. Yeah. So bike and well, I had to wait a semester before I could afford a bike. But and even when I was growing up in D.C., I took a bus everywhere. And yet now, when I see buses at night, they're mostly empty. And yep. All right. Uh, we've finished the agenda. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Uh, second. The second from Micah. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we stand adjourned. There were no no's. <laughs>